on a couple of points raised by the uh, National Party members, both Denise Lee and Honourable Nikki Kay, um, particularly when Honourable Nikki Kay got quite passionate and righteous about um, the damage that this was going to do for, I think she mentioned a few hundred uh, Māori and Pacific children, which we do like to talk about here in the House, um, and how it was going to harm them. Uh, she was referring, I think, specifically through um, private education arrangements, including charter schools. I know this is the Tertiary Education Amendment Act, but it does relate to the Section 2 parts, and particularly to um, uh, Supplementary Order Paper Number 17, from Honourable Paul Goldsmith, which essentially, from what I'm reading, is about um, uh, continuing with the ideological drive for privatising tertiary education and particularly allowing them to um, allowing them to have a, a bit of a bite at public monies. Um, so what I wanted to sort of pick up on there is that. Privatisation is a, is a failed response to when you have gutted funding from public, public education and when you haven't paid teachers and tutors correctly and when you haven't provided for the education resources um, and, and when you are gutting and underfunding public education, that then allows for a an ideological response, which is exactly what this national previous government were trying to do with their original version of this legislation. Um, and so it is important that we keep actually saying who are the ideological ones here. And the reason why it's not, it's, it's about making sure that we are clear and upfront about the difference between private tertiary and public tertiary institutions. And my understanding in section two is that that was how we were going to start muddying those lines of differentiation by trying to play around with the definitions and I think calling them independent starting to call private, uh, the proposal was to start to take away the word private and instead start calling tertiary institutions independent. So that, that was the roundabout way I believe, that's I think what this supplementary order paper is about. And the supplementary order paper was um, putting, as was from the national member, is trying to put back in that attempt to continue with the privatisation ideology by, because you know, the reason why the Greens support this now is because this, this part of the legislation, um, section two, I think it's clauses uh, from after clause 11, was taken out by a smart uh, minister, Chris Hipkins, who understands that we do not want to continue to use public monies, um, more public monies, for what is a, uh, for private institutions, public monies for public education. And so the member Paul Goldsmith's SOP tries to take, tries to put it back in, tries to put that ideology back in. And so of course the Greens will be opposing this supplementary order paper. And, and so when we stand in this House and we throw onto the floor of this debate Māori and Pacific children who apparently are going to lose private contract funding through this legislation, we need to call that out. Because we need to also throw onto the floor the hundreds of thousands of Māori and Pacific students who are, do not fare well when we gut public education. So if you want to throw numbers and throw Māori and Pacific Island students, I didn't do it first, on this floor, how about we well, throw onto this floor um, the hundreds of thousands um, who have not benefited from the very privatisation ideology which this legislation is trying to correct. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I call Marion Ludwig. Thank you, Madam Chair.